Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be using the May 2021 sheet load of cards to create a set of six clear cards. I hope you'll stick around to see what supply and cutting changes I make and to see the final product. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. I know it's a little later in the month than usual, but I am back and ready to share my sheet load of cards for the month. If after seeing today's video, you want to make some of these for yourself, I will link the debut video below where you can download this file for free if you are a subscriber to my channel. And I will also link my clear card Q&A. In that video, I go over a lot of specifics about clear card stock. Now, please keep in mind that my preferred clear card stock is currently out of stock on Amazon, but I think I have found the exact product I buy online. So I'm going to link that below, but keep in mind I have never ordered from this business, but I do like the fact that they have the 8.5 by 11, 10 mil with square corners and tissue interleaves. And if you're like blah, 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 that will make more sense if you watch that clear card Q&A video. If you're interested in seeing more of my clear cards, I do have a playlist which I will link in the description box as well. But for now, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the supplies that I'll be using today. I will of course be using that free printable and there are a few changes to the supplies and then later the cutting that you'll need if you want to make a set of clear cards. My plan today is to have the clear card base and I will not be putting CS1 there at all. We're just going to leave it clear and nice and open. So we do not need two pieces of CS1 and for CS2 Instead of one piece, you will need two, but you'll be able to get the mats and the inner cards out of just those two pieces. For my pattern papers, I pre-chose two patterns from the Echo Park Summer Days 6x6 pad. I thought that the polka dots were fun, and then you have one more pattern paper with a lot of bright colors. I did pre-choose some Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers that I'll be doing my coloring with. And I just kind of match this pattern paper up to my printed swatch guide that I have created. I got out two sheets of yellow cardstock to use for my CS2 pieces. And of course, here in the back, I have out three pieces of 10 mil clear cardstock. Sometimes it messes with the light, so I'll just leave it right there for now. For my images and sentiment today, I'm going to use this fun set from Papery Ink. It's called You Are. I actually got this from the Not Too Shabby shop because not only do they sell their own products, they sell lots of other companies as well. Now, if after seeing my video today, you want to check out this stamp set for yourself, I will link it in the Not Too Shabby shop below, and I even have a special discount code for you that you can save 10%. As I start the process, I will go to a voiceover. If I leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. Before I get started, I do have a special channel member shout out. I would like to give a great big welcome to my latest paper trimmer level member to be free at last. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you as well to all of my other channel members. And if you're interested in finding out more about the perks of membership, I do have a link at the top of the description box below. And now on to our process. The process of cutting the 6x6 pattern papers is the same as in that original video, so I won't go over much of that with you, but I do have, I wouldn't call it a fun little story, but I have a little story about where I've been. 
I recorded the intro to this video that you just saw almost a week ago and the process that you're going to see is what I have done recently. I started this video and then I had to leave to go get my daughter from school and didn't make it back down that same day. Well, the next morning I got up, I got ready, had my breakfast, came down to finish the video. And as soon as I stepped into the basement, I was met by a puddle of water. I know some of you may have already seen this on my community tab, but my craft area was filled with everything from the rest of the basement where we had to tear up the carpet and move everything out until we could dry it. We are still using the dehumidifiers and we're not quite done with the basement. So I just wanted to give you a heads up that over the next few weeks, my videos might be hit or miss because we will have to move my studio around so we can finish tearing up the rest of the carpet that's dry and then start putting down the new. At this point, I don't think it is going to interrupt any sheet load of cards videos like the debut or the process, but I might have a few fewer videos in June just while we do that. So thank you for your patience and understanding. Make sure to stay subscribed though, because when I get back, I hope to be back with a vengeance. The first thing that is different with these cards is going to be the CS2. Instead of just using one sheet and a scrap, I will be using two sheets because the final size of the folded piece needs to be the same as the three and a quarter by three and a quarter inch piece that was originally behind the piece of square pattern paper. What I will do is cut these into strips that are three and a quarter inches wide, and then I will cut pieces off that that are six and a half inches tall and one and a quarter inches tall. The six and a half inch tall piece gets folded for that inner card base, and then the smaller of the two pieces will be the mat for the other piece of pattern paper. Once I had all of that yellow cardstock cut, I folded the larger pieces in half, and then you'll see those fit the square pieces of pattern paper with that nice border left. And those will be the inner cards so that my personal message to the recipient will be hidden by the front. Next up, I cut down my clear cardstock for my card bases. I'm just gonna show you how I do one sheet, how easy it is, but I just cut that in half to five and a half inches wide, and then each of those halves gets folded in half for a top fold card. The next step in this process would have been to cut and punch my pieces from white cardstock for my image or sentiment, but I did create a cut file and I cut six of those out on my silhouette. If you are a channel member, I did provide this cut file for free and you can find that on our community tab. Now you might notice some of my tags have some stragglers hanging off them from cutting. My silhouette blade has taken a beating lately so I just either move those off with my fingernail or cut them off quickly with some sharp scissors and I was ready to move on. I matted each of my pattern papers with their cardstock mats. I did need to make sure since the clouds go one direction on that pattern paper that I was placing those onto the card bases correctly, but I just matted all 12 of these pieces and then it's time to move on to some stamping. Because I will be stamping images multiple times, I went ahead and got out my Misty as well as my VersaFine Onyx Black for all of my stamping. For my card today, I chose You Are Positively Cool and You Are Meowsome, and I will be doing three of each of those sentiments. The first thing I did was set up my You Are and Positively Awesome. And because these stamps are new, they are quite sticky on the back. So I was having some issues getting them to stay where I wanted to. So you'll see there I got out my embossing buddy and I just kind of tap my fingertips in there and then I place my stamps and my fingers don't stick as much. I made sure everything looked pretty straight across and then I started my stamping. 
While I work on some of the sentiments, I did want to give you a heads up that at the end of this video, I'm going to be telling you about a surprise hidden giveaway where you can win the stamp set that I'm using today. So make sure to keep watching to find out what you need to do. Once I had finished those first three sentiments, I did clean off my stamps and then I set up my second sentiment for the You Are Meowsome. Once all of those are done, I brought in a piece of Strathmore Bristol Smooth that was four by six inches, and I'm gonna be stamping my cats onto these. Because I will be coloring with Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers, I find this paper works best for me. There are only five catacorns on this stamp set, so I will be using one of them twice. I set those up on that piece of paper, making sure that when I go to use my brother's scanning, and cut later to cut these out that I have some space between each one. Once the first five were in place I inked them up and stamped them twice just to get a nice solid black since they're new and then once that was done I cleaned those off and I chose to use the catacorn that has the stars around her eyes for the sixth image. After all of those were stamped, I took it to my brother's scan and cut, scanned those and cut them out. I am just loving this new machine. Now it is time to do my coloring. I got out all of my zig markers and I will have all of those colors listed in the description box below. And I decided to try something that a subscriber suggested and that was to hold my images in place with the cardstock that got cut from around it. So that is what I tried on my first kitty. And for these images today, I'm gonna do something a little bit different than I normally do. Normally I would bring in the markers Marker directly to my cat image but now I'm gonna put it on that piece of laminated cardstock and pick it up with my colorless blender this makes for a lighter more muted look on the coloring while I finish the first cat which I will do all at one time this is a great time to stop by with today's QOTV or question of the video I love finding out more about you and sharing a little bit more about me as well Today's question was submitted by channel member Johnielle S. And she would like to know, what is your go-to ink pad brand? Make sure to leave your answer in the description box below. And don't forget to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know that you've answered the question and would like me to see it. For me, if I'm going to be using a colored ink, I usually go to my Gina K ink cubes and full size ink pad stash. If I'm gonna be using black, I usually reach for my VersaFine Onyx black, which I use today, or my Memento Tuxedo black. Once I finished my first catacorn, I went into more of an assembly line coloring idea. I put a lot of gray onto my palette and I went and I colored all of my cats for that light gray shade. Then when that was done, I brought in the red and I colored in each part of each image that I wanted in red, usually once on the horn and once on the tail. Now sometimes I did use the yellow for the stars and if my catacorn had a star on it, then I skipped yellow in the tail and in the horn just so I could bring in more blue and more purple on the images. Now you might have noticed there, I switched from having my pieces in the negative to putting them on a piece of press and seal. This held them in place lightly while I needed it to, and then I could easily pull these off when I had everything colored. And here is a look at those six finished catacorns. Now that all of the pieces were ready, I could start assembling my cards. For this first one I'm gonna show you, I'm just gonna eyeball everything. I place adhesive on the back of that inner card and place that to the left, trying to get an even border on the top, left, and bottom. Then on the front of the card, I place my sentiment over toward the right, just kind of looking at the sketch off to my side and trying to get that in position. 
finally on the front I put the little strip of pattern paper and this went just a little bit further to the right almost like it had the same border as the piece to the left. For the second card that I'm going to show you I brought in my sheet load of cards printable and I'm actually going to use the card sketch on the front to help me align my pieces. If you do print these at 100% then the sketch on the front is going to be actual size. I place my clear card base right over that sketch and then place my inner card where it shows on the sketch that that square would go. I did this with the remaining pieces and I would have to say they both ended up looking pretty much the same but because it's kind of hard to see the clear card bases this might help you get stuff more straight or more aligned on your card. I finished the remaining four cards just by eyeballing them and then it was time to get my images put on the front. Because I wanted to add a little bit more dimension, I did go ahead and pulled in my big blue roll of foam tape in the 3 quarter inch width. I put a small piece of this on the back of each of my catacorns and then because the blue peels off just a little bit easier if you burnish it, I did that on each of my cats and then placed my images onto my card. And here's a little look at all six of those finished. Would you like to win this set of stamps for yourself? If so, all the way at the bottom of the description box below is a link to the giveaway video. Now because this is a hidden giveaway, it is a surprise, so please do not mention anything about it in the comment section below. Unfortunately, if you do, that will take you out of the running and your comment will be deleted. I want to make sure that the people who are watching and listening to my videos are the ones who are going to get entered in the giveaway. Good luck! I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together this sheet load of clear cards. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.